So the Samsung Q9T was one of the first TVs that I looked at in 2020 and it was at a job and I felt rushed. So I have a 55 inch Samsung Q9T in house. I'm gonna review it, show it up against an OLED. Let's get to it. So what's up, it's B the Installer. I'm a low voltage contractor, consult, procure TVs and home theater products for customers. And I've reviewed pretty much every TV in 2020, all the LED TVs, all the OLED TVs, but I hadn't got an opportunity to really sit down with the Samsung Q90T until now. So I'm gonna give you a full rundown, what's in the box, how it performs, and then with the Sony A8H, the LG C10, a Vizio OLED H1. I'm gonna put this Q90T up against some of these and see how it performs. And in addition, at the end, I'm gonna give you a couple points on who would buy this TV and where you'd put it. As per usual, make sure you smash the like button if you find the video worthy. If you don't, smash the dislike button. Either way, smash something. And subscribe to the channel, especially if you wanna know what the best TVs are and when they're gonna be on sale because they've been on sale lately and I've been trying to let people know but I definitely can't let you know if you don't subscribe. And definitely comment or ask questions below. I'm very happy to help you with your buying decisions if you need a little push toward a product. And I'm always willing to learn from the YouTube community. So let's get into the box. So Samsung TVs have always been quite well built and this is no exception. QLEDs have some technological problems with the design and being backlit and all, you have to have some depth, but the entire TV is only 1.4 inches thick. So overall, it's one of the thinnest LED TVs. It's actually thinner than most OLED TVs. And even though those OLED TVs have very thin screens, the TVs are still roughly two inches thick. And I've had the Hisense H9G and the Sony X950H and the TCL 635, and all three of those TVs are far thicker than this Samsung Q90T. So the Samsung Q90T is very uniform and it'll be great for wall mounting or just an overall clean look. Another way to have a clean look is the stand. And this one isn't that complicated. It's got eight screws, four of them for the back of the TV and four of them that mount down into the stand. And this is a little bit of a good news, bad situation, mostly good news, but the stand's a bit wobbly for my taste, but that's what you get when it's an elevated stand. And the reason that it's elevated is so that you can sneak a soundbar underneath it if that's something you wanna do. And to be honest, the speakers aren't that great, so I'd probably recommend it. But if a soundbar isn't in your future, you could always put some nice scented candles underneath the TV. No, I'm kidding. Do not put scented candles underneath the TV. I've actually seen that with an LG C9 and it didn't turn out so good for the customer. I don't think that's what they mean by avoiding burn-in. And whether you wall mount it or not, I really like that all the ports are on the side of the TV to make it even cleaner. It actually has four HDMIs, Three of them are HDMI 2.0, one of them is an HDMI 2.1, and that of course is for gaming at 4K at 120, along with game mode, VRR, and it also has FreeSync. One of the HDMI 2.0s is actually eARC compatible, which is enhanced audio return channel, so you can connect it to a soundbar and get Dolby Atmos and other high bandwidth sound quality. It's probably worth it at this point just to make all of the HDMIs 2.1, even though I know the game systems aren't likely to be that substantially better in HDMI 2.1 or, or even that they're gonna figure it out in 2020. But really, if you're gonna be spending this kind of money on these TVs, it would just be nice to be future-proofed. I'm not sure of the cost specifics, but these TVs drop three to $400 around Black Friday, so I'm sure they could stick a couple more HDMI 2.1s but one port is better than none, right? But one thing I don't have to complain about because it's one of the best features of this TV is the Samsung Bluetooth remote. This remote is very simple, but quite well done. It has all the necessary buttons and literally no more. It's Bluetooth, so it controls all the different devices and the volume and channel buttons are elevated, so they're easy just to kind of push up and down and you can mute by pressing the center of that volume button. And the back button, which is the most commonly used button besides the up, down, left, right, and enter, is positioned perfectly to the bottom left of the pad. So if you're right-handed, it's the most natural move you can make with your hand. And it's funny to talk about that stuff, but use these TVs for five to 10 years and you start thinking about ease of use. And I've complained that all of the high-end TVs should really have a backlit remote because a lot of times you're watching in the dark, but the Samsung Bluetooth remote is very easy to use in the dark and I think that it's a great feature of this TV. But ease of use can only be half remote because the other half of it is the fantastic Tizen software once you turn the TV on. It's a little bit different in 2020, but still fairly 
really easy to use. And Samsung's kind of always been in the forefront of smart TVs, and it definitely keeps expanding as time goes on. The Samsung Plus channels are fantastic. There's so much content that you can watch for free. The only downside to the Samsung OS and remote is the Bixby operation. I'm not a big fan of trying to talk to Bixby. It just doesn't work like Google Assistant or Alexa or, you know, Siri for that matter. And one of the apps that I definitely wanted to open up was YouTube, so I could talk about a couple of things regarding this LED TV. So we know QLED TVs are typically brighter than OLED TVs, but the knock is that they can't get perfectly black or that sometimes they have uniformity issues or dimming issues. But I'm happy to let you know that the Samsung Q90T was one of the best performing QLED TVs. It has fantastic contrast, it has very good local dimming, and there was very little blooming when watching content. And I was impressed with how dark the screen can get when I know it can get very bright. Anyways, that gets us to the fun stuff like picture quality and comparing it to some of the best TVs on the market. So really to give you the most info and to give you the strengths and weaknesses of this TV, I'm gonna take you to the Be The Install TV wall. And as you can see, I have three different TVs on the wall besides the Q90T. It's the LG C10, the Sony A8H, and the Vizio OLED H1. So I wanna compare and contrast this, but I think it's kinda of pointless to show it against these three TVs because I know that this Samsung Q90T will be brighter than the OLEDs. So why don't we just compare it against one of them, the LG C10. And I'm gonna watch four different types of content. I wanna pop into an HDR movie and check that out. I wanna show you some gaming which is 4k at 60 and then i'm going to show you some cable and some sports on sdr from my spectrum app which i think that will give you kind of the best idea of really why you'd want to get this samsung q90t so stick around for that so many of you may know that i'm a big mcu fan and today i'm going to pop on avengers infinity war because it has fantastic color and great action and these things are really going to help me show this tv off and keep your attention. And right off the bat, I noticed that the Samsung Q90T is really great in HDR. It has fantastic color, fantastic contrast. And I wasn't gonna be easy on this, so I'm looking for blooming and uniformity issues with this TV. And to be honest, it's about as good as I've seen for an LED TV competing with the infinite contrast of an OLED TV. In the extremely dark scenes, the OLED still has a bit of an edge when it comes to the perfect contrast, so it can create a bit more of a cinematic feel but that's only as long as you're watching it in a dark scene. Once the movie gets to a bright scene, there's a huge difference. The Samsung was extremely bright, and because of this, it just made the C10 look a lot more dull than I thought it would have. Now, you probably wouldn't notice this if you were just watching one without the other, because I think that the Samsung Q90T has fantastic blacks and it has great pop, but when you get an opportunity to see them side by side, you can really make a good decision for yourself. And when I was watching these brighter scenes, I really wanted to find out how good I could make the Q90T look. So I'll Already happy, I lowered the shadow detail to minus two, which still showed far more detail than the LG C10, but now the Samsung had amazing depth in the picture that the LG literally could not do. The LG looks gray instead of white because the brightness limiter. And to make things even more dramatic, I took it from its natural color temperature to warm two. The result was a clear winner for the Q90T in brighter scenes in HDR, and the darker scenes were still very vibrant, even with just a slight bit less contrast than the LG C10 and very little blooming in the widescreen. So not bad at all. And this is without Dolby Vision. Remember, Samsung only supports HDR10 Plus and not Dolby Vision HDR. And you know, I'm not happy about that overall, but there was no question that the Samsung Q90T doesn't need Dolby Vision to compete in HDR. So now that we've checked out the HDR, I wanna pop it into game mode and see how that looks. And to be honest, in game mode, the picture quality didn't change that much, if at all. It remained bright and colorful with great contrast and detail. And my son, who was a gaming expert, was wowed by the Q90T in game mode. And again, once you put it up against the LG C10, in a darker scene, they looked very similar, but as soon as it got to a brighter scene, the Samsung really shined again, showing more color, showing more vibrance, with a lot more brightness. It just really fills out the picture. So the fact that this TV is so bright, it has the game mode, it has VRR with FreeSync and the HDMI 2.1 that can eventually get you 4K at 120, 
There's no question that this Samsung Q90T is one of the best gaming TVs in 2020. And as I said, one of the best features of this TV is how great it looks in the SDR content. First off, it upscales very well. I noticed that the motion and the upscaling looked fantastic. It was definitely as good as the LG C10. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but the Q90T really gets bright when you're watching your typical TV, especially in any sort of like middle to bright scenes. It's a dramatic difference from the LG C10. There's just so much more depth and color to faces and backgrounds, and logos just have so much more brightness to them. And when you're watching the typical news, sports, shows, you get a pretty wide range of brightness and colors. But a majority of the news and sports has a lot of content where the Samsung is just much preferred because of the brighter picture. And it just gives everything more life and color. When it went back to a darker scene, the Q90T still held its own with regards to dark areas and contrast while still having much brighter highlights. So I definitely have to give a clear advantage to the Samsung Q90T, specifically if you're going to be watching cable and news often. And on top of this, remember, you don't have to worry about burning. I mean, I really don't worry about burning in general, but some people that just watch news or game and they have consistent static screens or logos, I definitely would recommend the Q90T for that because you're not gonna have to worry about burning at all. So what does this all mean? Let me kind of summarize the features. So overall, it's just a great TV. I don't have a lot to complain about. After seeing all of the different LED TVs this year, it's clearly better than any 4K Sony LED. I mean, the X950H was not as bright, nor did it have the vibrant colors, the contrast, or dimming. It wasn't even close. So on the bright side, it owns the QLED crown of 2020. And when you put it up against an OLED, you have to really think about what you'll be watching and where you'll be watching it. If you're gonna be in a pitch black cinema room 24 seven, then I could see why you'd consider an OLED because you'd have no blooming and you'd have perfect contrast. And brightness isn't such a big deal when you're watching scenes in the dark or in a dark room. But on the other hand, if you're looking for a main room TV and it's a semi-bright room or you plan on watching a lot of TV and sports or gaming in any kind of lit room, how could you not consider the Samsung Q90T? And I'm a huge fan of OLED TVs, but with the brightness advantage and the ability of the Q90T to really knock down reflections, it's kind of a no-brainer in a well-lit room. So I hope this information has helped. Smash the like button if it has. Definitely hit me up with any comments or questions. If you need a little push toward that purchasing decision, let me know, I'm happy to help. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get my next upload. And just remember with my help, you can be the installer.